Hello, hello, hello. Uh, today back again in the garage uh, working on this uh, CRX, this uh, poopy pile of, yeah, this thing's a pile of junk. Um, I ripped off the uh, trim pieces last night. Uh, they go, you know, down there and it covers up a lot of that rust. But uh, yeah, it's actually a garage door blocker now. So my garage can actually hold a little bit of heat because my garage door doesn't like actually shut all the way which sucks, but uh, yeah, so um, it's super cold out here in Wisconsin lately. Uh, we've been spoiled with good weather uh, for this time of year, but now it's getting cold, so I'm getting the garage warmed up and uh, whatever so we can work on some stuff. But today, I'm actually gonna tackle the fuel pump problem on the CRX. Um, as you know, in the last couple of videos, I've been talking about it and the um, fuel pump seems to be having an issue when the car warms up a little bit. Uh, the more you drive it, the leaner it gets. And it actually died on me one day um, and it took a couple hours to come back to life. So I'm thinking that the fuel pump, because it's got 300,000 miles on it, is probably just on its way out. So I'm gonna see what I got laying around for a fuel pump. I think I got my factory fuel pump out of my uh, WRX. And then I got, uh, I might have a Walbro 255 here. Uh, I'm going to have to look and see if I have any good fuel pumps to use, but uh, yeah, I'm going to show you how I put uh, fuel pumps in EFs and CRXs. I've actually never done this, but uh, I'm going to do it this way just because it seems to be a lot easier and I really don't feel like laying on the fucking cold concrete. So yeah, let's do it. All right, so I'm going to actually start by taking out the like rear carpet and the uh, trunk thing. It's like a storage container. And on this car, it's quick access to get it out, so. There we go. <clears throat> now we have access to the uh, trunk area here, and I believe the fuel pump is going to be like right in this area here. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I did watch one of Young Static's videos, and he, had, he has done this on his car. And it looked like that area right there is where he cut out. All right, guys, we'll try this at home. Or try it at home. I don't really care. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just going to test this fuel pump because it's been sitting in like my attic for, uh, I don't even know, a few years. And I have no idea if I pulled it out because it was bad or if I just pulled it out of a car I was selling or something. I don't remember at all. But it doesn't have a strainer, uh, like a uh, filter on the bottom or anything like that. So this thing might be bad. I have no idea. But we're going to test it with a battery charger and see if the pump motor works. Um, so, yeah, we'll start by doing that. Uh, the left side of these Walbro 255 pumps is positive and the right side, looking at it this way, is the negative. And I got my battery charger hooked up here to a set of multimeter leads. And I'm just gonna, you know, touch the leads to the pump and see if the thing fires up or not. So we gotta make sure these are connected. Just like so. Let's show you what the hell's going on. All right, so we're gonna turn this on 12 volt maintainer. Don't need a whole lot of power to do this need a little bit and uh, here we go black to this one red to this one yeah this thing's locked up I figured it was damn it let's try it one more time pretty sure this thing's just junk Yeah, it just sits here and like hums. Like the motor's trying, but it's just locked up. So yeah, this thing's junk. All right, so I'm just gonna cut a hole here in the floor. Uh, you know, like I'm gonna cut out a chunk like here probably <clears throat> and see, you know, if we can get at the fuel pump or not. Uh, this car is completely like the body shot whatever 
I really don't want to mess with like the taking the gas lines down and all that stuff because sometimes on these old cars with 300 freaking thousand miles, you're going to end up replacing more than what you intended. <laughs> so we're just going to fucking cut away here. And if I blow myself up because this thing's got a gas leak, you'll see it on camera. So I cut, you know, like three, three sides of a square here and I left one, you know, still attached. So we can just pry this up and be able to get at it and then we can close it right back down when we're done. All right, boys and girls, let's see what we got under this thing. If we hit the jackpot spot or not, I'm trying to pry up here, get this thing bent up. Hey, look at that. Damn, I am a good cutter. That's like the perfect spot. Look at that, there's our fuel pump, boys. Sweet. So now all we need to do is take, you know, the electrical connections off and uh, take out the feed line right here. And I think the return line goes somewhere down here, I'm not sure. But yeah, then we just take the 10 mil bolts out and the whole assembly will come right up. All right, first you gotta take this uh, 17 mil bolt out. This is for the, oh, uh, the feed line. This feeds the motor its juices. So we lift it up, there's gonna be two washers. Uh, there's gonna be one on each side. So each side of the bolt there is gonna have a washer. So just make sure that those both go back in when you put it all back together. This fucking line seems like it's super flimsy, but whatever. We're rolling with it. All right. So next, uh, I'm going to take out the, figure out how to take these electrical connections off. Or I'll just take it out as a whole assembly. I'm not sure yet. So yeah, now I got to pop the 10 mil bolts out around the outside. All right, so I got the six 10 millimeter bolts out of the hat here. So now I'm gonna try to lift up on it. It sucks because I can't really lift with this hand yet. And if I get gas in my cut, that would fucking hurt really bad. So I'm trying to do this one handed here. Ah, fuck it. Come on, baby. All right, guys, so I got the fuel pump assembly out of the tank here. As you can see, um, I cut the wires for the fuel pump supply, the power and ground, I cut those. And then I also had to cut the return line to be able to get the pump hanger out. Um, if that return line is still on, it's gonna hit you know, over there on that piece of metal still, and you're not gonna be actually be able to get the pump out of the tank. <clears throat> so this is what the fuel pump looks like now that it's out. This pump is actually very big. This is actually a really big fuel pump, like in size comparison to like a fucking, to like a Wally 255. I mean, that thing's damn near twice the size. So yeah, now I gotta, now I just gotta find a fuel pump and put it on this hanger. All right guys, so I got the fuel pump out and I'm swapping it with a factory uh, Integra fuel pump. That's the only thing I got right now. I'm waiting on a Walbro 450 from a guy uh, that he's going to be selling me, but for now I'm just going to put a stock Integra pump in uh, just to see if that pump was bad because I know this one is good. So, um, yeah, I got it into the hanger here. I just uh, redid the wiring a little bit, uh, ran the, a new ground wire and a new power wire out. <coughs> And then I also got some uh, new hose on it. This is just a 3 8 uh, fuel injection hose that I clamped onto there. And I just zip tied the bitch. And uh, reused the uh, sock from the other pump. And there we are. Now I'll go put it back into the car. And I might rewire all of this too. Um, so we can get straight battery power to the fuel pump. 
that usually helps in aiding um, you know fuel pressure and stuff like that usually you get more out of the pump if you wire it straight to the battery uh, with a relay so I think I'm gonna be taking the factory wiring that triggers the fuel pump normally and I'm gonna have that trigger a relay and then run straight battery power to the relay and then to the pump so hopefully that'll all work out and uh, yeah this thing should be back together in no time and uh, we should be able to get testing it out all right so I got the fuel pump back and installed into the tank uh, everything's looking good I just had to splice a piece of uh, fuel injection hose for the return line because like I said I had to cut it to actually pull the pump out but now that the pump is back in I got it rewired just uh, you know factory wired I didn't rewire it or anything yet I may do that in the future when I go to a Walbro fuel pump but like I said I just wanted to make sure that uh, you know that stock CRX pump was the issue and I just took it out for a drive and didn't really notice any difference um, and then I went and filled up uh, I put like 20 22 dollars in this thing which is quite a bit and uh, gave me like a full tank of gas and all of a sudden BAM the tune changed and uh, it's right exactly where it should be it's actually running a little bit richer than normal which is good um, I think on these Hondas you got to keep over like a half a tank in them otherwise um, you know the pump can suck air and the, the car will run lean so I don't know I think I'm just gonna get in the habit of keeping over a half a tank of fuel in it if I'm beating on it and uh, I should be good to go but I do believe that that pump was getting weak or tired because it did like die on me and quit working completely so swapping out to this pump is definitely a good idea and the factory CRX fuel pump actually flows less from what I'm familiar with from what I've read online and the one I put in is out of an Integra so B series fuel pump versus a stock 50 fucking horsepower fuel pump so yeah now that that's all sorted out I am changing the oil right now <clears throat> putting good stuff in it finally uh, this is like the only oil I ever run on like anything that makes a decent amount of horsepower actually I shouldn't say that I should say if I build an engine I put this oil in it uh, it just seems to uh, work good and I never have no problems when I run it I also use uh, Wix oil filters WIX it's like a black filter uh, those always seem to work real good for me too they have I don't know I, I just I kind of go with whatever my engine builder tells me to run and he told me run Wix and Schaefer's and ever since I switched to Wix and Schaefer's oil I haven't spun a single rod bearing in any motor that I've put it in so that's kind of why I run it I mean it could just be coincidence but I don't know I'm sticking to it until something bad goes wrong and then maybe I'll switch it and say Schaefer's is drunk I don't know but I don't know I like it it seems to work real good like I said so well I got the oil all changed on the car now and just listen to this freaking trance it is bad hopefully you can hear that uh, that's like an input bearing or something grinding so uh, yeah let's go drive it and beat the shit out of it all right guys so I'm out driving this thing just pump the tires up because they're all fucking flat and uh, yeah this trans is so bad yeah I can't even fucking drive it This trans is completely shot. Hear it? I feel like the gears are gonna come out of the case. That's how bad it's like grinding around. It sucks because I was beating on it and I uh, didn't film it. And it was fine. Oh my God. Uh, okay, so the trans just literally bucked me. It like stopped me almost.
Yeah, it does not like that at all. I gotta get a trans like ASAP. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Probably not. Ugh, it really sounds scary. <laughs> I'm really hoping this thing makes it home. Hey, but hey, the motor's running real good. I, I'm really curious what's wrong with the trans. I wonder if it's like the input bearing is so shot that the gears stacks are not like meshing together how they should. sound and then it starts slowing the car down <laughs> that's how bad this tranny is and I've honestly never had a manual transmission get this bad I feel like the key here is to have the clutch all the way out because if it's like halfway in in and out the car like jerks really hard and I think it's because it's the input bearing because the clutch obviously rides on the input shaft and when the clutch is like half disengaged I bet you it's tugging on the input bearing more than it should. Oh boy. Maybe I'll rip this tranny out tomorrow and see what the hell's going on with it. I have a friend with uh, LS trans that I might go get and just see if I can maybe use some of the parts from that tranny and put them into this tranny. Uh, Cause I really just want this car to work and uh, drive it cause I really like driving it. All right guys, I barely made it home, but I made it home. Um, I'm actually kind of disappointed that this trans couldn't get me by at least a couple days. <laughs> so I could at least go have some fun with the car. But uh, yeah, one problem after another, I suppose. Um, this transmission has been acting up for quite some time and it recently lost fourth gear uh, a couple days ago and I've just been kind of driving it which obviously is just going to make it worse but uh, yeah I've been driving it and now the input bearing is so loud that it literally just screeches and ugh, it's, it's like ugh, it's, it's bad it's really bad and I'm thinking that the input shaft is walking around so bad that my clutch won't disengage and a bunch of other slew of problems like it was super hard going into gear and I got to get this fucking tranny out of here and dissect what is wrong with it so that might be the next video guys I'm probably gonna tear this tranny out and see what's wrong um, but yeah thanks for staying in us uh, thanks for watching guys <clears throat> um, subscribe if you guys are new if you are subscribed I really appreciate it um, the channel is growing quite a bit if you are a new subscriber, hello, and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the hack job fuel pump that we did on the CRX, and uh, until next time, we will see you later.